Welcome to the Montgomery County Public Schools Algebra 2 Final Exam Review made by Margaret Kaywood at Walter Johnson High School. Uh, we are going to start with Unit 1, Topic 1. Um, I would strongly encourage that you have already tried the problems before you watch the video so that you can get feedback. Um, and then, even after that, you try the problems again completely um, to prepare for the final exam. All right, so number one, let f and g be functions that are inverses of each other. Complete the following statements. If the point a, b is on the graph of f, then also the point b, a is going to be on that graph. All right, so our x and our y values end up switching places. If f of 3 equals 7, then g of 7 equals so they stated before the f and g are inverses, so we know x, y. We're plugging that in x. This point x, y should be on its inverse. The graph of f and g are symmetric with respect to that line. If we were drawing a graph, it would be that line right there. What is it called? y equals x. So the line y equals x. If we fold the graph, if we take one graph and reflect it over that line, It'll be the inverse function. All right, the range of f is the same as the domain. So range, or the y values of f, is the same as the domain, the x values of g. And the domain of f is the same as the range of g. All right, so if we let f and g be functions that are inverses of each other, uh, they want to say, well, give a numerical example showing why if this is f of x, then g of x does not equal that. Okay, so let's, it says give an example. So let's just try a number. Let's say 2. f of 2. Let's plug in 2 and see what we get. f of 2 is 2 squared. 2 squared. So f of 2 is 4. Let's just write that again. f of 2 is 4. So we know that if I plug in 4 into my g function, g of 4 should equal 2 if f and g are inverses. So let's check and see. So this is what our question mark. Is this going to happen? All right. So over here, if I plug in g of 4, g of 4, I get 1 over 4 squared. 1 over 4 squared is 1 16th, and that's definitely not the same as 2. Okay. So then g of x is not equal to 1 over. So we just want to emphasize that here, if I take this function x squared, and really I reciprocate it, 1 over x squared, that is not what an inverse function is. All right. Same thing here, we want to state, okay, well, if I have a positive 3x, the inverse is not going to be the opposite. So let's just prove that as well. So if we plug in a number, or disprove really is what we're doing. So let's say f of 5. If I plug in 5, here, then I'm going to have 3 times that same x value, 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So I know that if I plug in g of 15 in the inverse, then I should end up with 5 as my answer. <coughs> so if I come over here and I plug in, okay, let's check it. g of 15 it would equal negative 3 times 15, <coughs> which is negative 45. So that's definitely not the same as that. So this guy is not the, the inverse function. So uh, g is definitely not just the opposite. right? So it's not the reciprocal, and it's not the opposite. What it is, is it's the inverse, right? the x and y. It, it's all the operations that undo the original function. <coughs> so we're going to talk about that now. So let f and, b, f and g be functions that are inverses of each other. Um, so we know that f and g are inverses, so we need to see what undoes all of these operations. So the way that we talked about this is, well, from on x, sorry, there's a little interruption. Okay, so we're thinking about what happens to x first and what happens to x second. So the very first thing that occurs to x is we multiply by 3. So I'm going to go times 3. And then the second thing that happens is we subtract 2. Now I want to do the inverse operations in the opposite order. So the opposite, the inverse of minus 2 would be plus 2, and the inverse of times 3 would be divided.
divide by 3. So I'm going to go in this order. Here I went in this order, I multiplied by 3, I subtracted 2, I'm doing the opposite, op I'm sorry, the inverse operation in the opposite order. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to x is I'm going to add 2. And then that whole thing gets divided by 3. So the inverse of that is that. And you know what? I could even check it. I could plug in, let's try f of 1. Plug in a 1, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Huh, 1, 1. So if I plug in a 1 here, I should get a 1 out. If I plug in this 1, right, the output, then, let's see, I plug in 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I get that same x and y switched, but it's harder to see with 1. I, that's all right. Okay, uh, maybe you try it with another number and just double check it. Okay, here we have three operations happening. The first thing we do is we cube, so it's something cubed. The second thing that happens is we multiply by 2, and the third thing is we add 9. So the inverse operations would be... Subtract 9, divide by 2, and cube root. So the, we need to go in this order. So we went in that order initially. We're going to go in this order, the opposite order. Um, all right, so we're going to take our x, and we're going to subtract 9 first. Then we are going to divide that whole thing by 2, and then everything there gets cube rooted. And that would be our inverse. Sorry, it's a little hard to read. Let me write that better. It's very important that the radical go all the way down and include that whole chunk. Okay, here we have two things occurring. I'm going to write down here because I feel like we don't have enough room for C. So we are going to first multiply times 5, so times 5, and then we are going to cube root. So the inverse of cube root is cubing it. So I'm going to do the opposite operation, and instead of multiplying by 5, I'm going to divide by 5. So I need to go in this order. So I'm going to first take x and cube it, and then I'm going to divide by 5. And that would be the inverse of that. And again, we could check it by plugging in a point, plugging in a value, see what we get. Whatever the answer is, plug in here, and we should come out with, this, with the question. All right. Here, f of x equals 10 to the x. Well, this is exponential. And the inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. So here, it has a base of 10. So our inverse function is a log, base 10, of x. Now, we don't tend to write the 10, but really what that says is log base 10 of x. This is standard. It's a common log. Okay? And then here we have natural log. Natural log of x has a base of e. So here, if we have a log function, the inverse of a log is an exponential. So e to the x would be our inverse function. All right. So those are functions and their inverses. All right. Now we have some graphically. So we have some values here, here. First, my first goal is maybe to find some points that I can identify. And then once I've identified those points, I can take them. So here we have negative 5, negative 8 negative 4, negative 1, and I can take those points and I can find the inverse of those points, and the inverse point would be negative 8, negative 5. So at negative 8, negative 5, this point uh, corresponds with that point. Here we have negative 1, negative 4, and then these are the other points when you find them, um, and negative 1, 8, so 8, negative 1. So our function would look like this. And you want to make sure, well, you know, here it doesn't have arrows, but because it goes off the graph, I feel like it's pretty clear that that continues on. Okay? All right, same thing here, so that's fine. Let's see, I see one point there, one point there, and maybe one point here. It's a little unclear. So I see 0, 0, I see 1, 3, and I see 7, 8. So we're going to take those ordered pairs, and we're going to find the inverse. So 0, 0 stays 0, 0, 3, 1, and 8, 7. And we wanted to, if we were graphing this on the same line, it would reflect over that line, right? What's that line? Yes, y over x. All right. All right, so here, again, I think this is a square root function that's been stretched, so I'm, I'm going to put an arrow there. 
All right. Okay, wonderful. What else do we have? Jill says lemonade. The profit P in dollars is a function of the number of glasses of lemonade G that she sells. The function that represents this relationship is this. So we're given P of G equals two times G minus 18, $2 per glass. And she already spent $18. So we have to write a function that gives the number of glasses. So that's what we want on the outside. The number of glasses with respect to P, with respect to our profit, is gonna equal the profit. We're gonna do some things to it. We want to find um, to earn a profit of P dollars. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing that happened here is we multiplied times 2, and the second thing is we subtracted 18. I'm going to switch this up a little bit. I think this is how my colleague did it. So first this, then this. So now we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to, I'm sorry, inverse of negative 18, which is plus 18, and the inverse of times 2, which is divide by 2. So we are going to go this way now. So first thing we do is we add 18, and then we divide by 2. All right. If Jill made a profit of $32, so this is P. If we plug in our profit of $32, add 18 and divide by 2, we will figure out how many glasses of, what is she selling? Glasses of lemonade she sold. All right, so 30, 40, 50. 50 cut in half is 25. And we want to state units if we're ever talking about a word problem. So she, she sold 25 glasses. I think a sentence would even be wonderful. Maybe Jill, we know that Jill spent, um, I'm sorry, we know that Jill sold 25 glasses of lemonade. All right, I think there's one more problem and that's the end of unit one, topic one video. Uh, very similar to the last one. On the national test, the student receives a score based on the number of correct items. The score S in points is a function of the number of correct items C. The function that represents this relationship is given here. All right, so write a function that gives the number of correct items that it will take to receive a score of S. So now we're saying S is our variable in here, and we want to find the number of correct items. So again, we're going to to find the inverse. So we're going to say first what happened to C is we multiplied by 2.5 and then we added 200. Now if I undo those operations, I'm going to first I'm going to undo the plus 200. So I'm going to subtract 200 first and then I'm going to divide by 2.5. All right, so I get S. First I subtract 200 and then I divide by 2.5. All right. That would be our equation or our function. And a student receives a score of 325. So I'm going to put 325 minus 200 over 2.5. How many times items did the student score correct? So here I do the subtraction. I get 125. Now, off the top of my head, I don't know what that division is, but I'm going to change it to a fraction. I know you guys love fractions because five halves, I can then multiply by the reciprocal. So 125 times the reciprocal, two divided by five. Then we can find our answer more easily. 125 divided by five is 25, or you could double this. So we get 250 divided by five, either way. So there I get 25 times two, 25 times two, and it looks like they got 50 items correct. Wonderful. I hope this video was helpful if you had forgotten any of the inverse stuff from Unit 1, Topic 1. Thank you for watching.